and I'm actually going to close Facebook. There we go. Looks okay. Hi, Claire. We are. We're live. Hi, Lenora. How are you? I'm good. Got to turn off those notifications. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, hello, Soul Rider Journey people. Um, I am Lenora Henson. I am the content and design manager with Burning Salt Press, joined by the lovely Claire Coffey. She is our success manager. Success manager. And we are here today to talk to you about reviews, which is a big hot topic in the world of publishing. So um, Claire, where do you want to start today? Why don't we talk about or get started talking about the different types of reviews? I initially, when you and I first started talking about reviews, I don't think either one of us realized how many different types of reviews are out there. This is true. So when we, as an author, we want reviews. We want reviews of our book, and um, sometimes they're going to be negative. Hopefully, most of them are going to be positive, but if, even if they are negative, we can learn from them. Um, having said that, getting a lot of reviews is good for the book. It gives the book um, what they call that social proof um, that people are reading it, and um, as somebody say, I went to Amazon and I come across your book and it's got two reviews that immediately seeing that is not going to make me want to jump in um, and, and look at it. Now, of course, there's other things that, that play a part in it. The book cover um, there, other things are going to draw you in too, but people do look at reviews. I read reviews. Do you read reviews? Claire? Absolutely. And I think with, when it comes to making any kind of purchase, I, I think a lot of people even unconsciously look at, they take in the number of reviews that are posted for that product, whether it's a book or a piece of furniture or some random item you're looking at on Amazon, mm -hmm. you happen to digest how many reviews are posted. And if it's mostly good or mostly bad or whether it's worth you clicking by. Right, right. And the content of the review matters too. Um, so some of the different types of reviews, um, we have a customer review and then we also have an editorial review. Those are the two that come to mind for me. Um, so a customer review is say you're the author and I don't never met you before, don't really know you on social media or anything, but I've read your book. And I bought it from Amazon. So I could go, after I've read it, I could go to Amazon and I can leave a review of that book. Um, that Because I bought it from Amazon, it would be a verified review. And But say I didn't buy it from Amazon. Say I met you at um, a book signing and I bought the book directly from you. Um, but I read it and... I really liked it and I want to leave a good review um, because I want other people to know about this book. So I go on Amazon and what I would do, I could leave a review if I was a member, if I had an active Amazon account that has been, and I've spent $50 within the past year, um, I could still leave a review. It wouldn't be a verified review, but it would still be left as a review. So the verified reviews, and tell me if I'm wrong, the verified reviews have the little green check, right? Yes. And it says verified review in green? Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. And that just really means that the person bought it straight from Amazon and then they, they left a review. Um, and I think that the verified reviews end up going more toward the top. Yeah. Um, where the unverified reviews are going to be toward the bottom. Now we've had authors that um, people have been on their launch team and they, they go to leave reviews and they can't do it. And, you know, we're trying to figure out why, well, they have to have, they have to have a, an active card and have spent that $50. And also um, 
you have to watch what country you bought it from. That's got to be the same place you're leaving the review at too. So there's a lot of idiosyncrasies when it comes to leaving reviews, especially on Amazon. My best mm -hmm. advice would be to um, got to read the guidelines wherever you're at, like, well, we'll get into the where here in a minute. <laughs> um, but then we've th those are the consumer reviews. So then there's also editorial reviews. You want to talk a little bit about, uh, about that? Sure. Editorial reviews or peer reviews, those are the reviews that are, they're usually highlighted on an author's Amazon page or um, sometimes they're on like say the, the book cover image or the, the back cover copy. And this is a known person in that industry. And um, this would be an industry expert, one of your peers in your field. And that's someone who their review is extremely worthwhile to the industry in your book. And they're verifying basically what you have to say in your book. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's and they have credibility. Right. People know them. Right, right. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example of what that would look like. Um, I guess in the world of fiction, if like, for instance, just thinking off the top of my head here, like Reese Witherspoon and her Hello Sunshine media company, if she left a review on my book, that would definitely be something that I highlighted. Mm -hmm. That would be considered an editorial review in the world of fiction because she runs Reese's book picks and all of that. Um, and then in the world of nonfiction, I would say like, like a Brene Brown mm -hmm. on good. any kind of self-help topics. Brene Brown would be an example there. Um, and I'm just talking super famous Right. And, but you want them to relate to your book and your niche, you know, right, you, can't, right. you know, a fiction book, a fiction, romance fiction, and it'd be like a scientist or whatever, <laughs> unless it relates to your, yeah. your book, right? Right. So, um, yeah. You want to keep it uh, topic to in. So also with the editorial reviews, um, what's nice is, you know, you can ask people to give you those, um, you know, if it's a peer and you can ask somebody to give that to you and then you can actually put it in yourself on your Amazon central page. You can have a list of editorial reviews. You know, I think probably, Oh, maybe five to 10 is a good amount for editorial reviews. Absolutely. And I do want to interject here too. the editorial reviews when you're going on a a book's page on Amazon, as you scroll down the page, those editorial reviews are going to be highlighted in the middle of that page. And it's going to be bigger and more eye-catching before you scroll all the way down to the regular, but not unimportant, other customer reviews. Absolutely. So those editorial reviews are great for just again, just highlighting that social proof of your book. Exactly. And then with customer reviews too, um, you can also ask for those. And this, where, this is where it gets a little tricky and you have to make sure that you read the Amazon community guidelines when it, when it is talking about this. I mean, I can't tell you everything that it says in there, um, but I can tell you it's important to know the guidelines because we've seen reviews get pulled. Um, you don't want somebody that lives in the same house as you with the same Amazon ad address uh, right. leaving a review because they'll pull it. Right, um, right. Um, friends and family in general, yeah. I would I would stay away from. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, that doesn't mean that friends can't post reviews. We don't want them to be like really lovey-dovey, um, super personal because Amazon will, you know, they'll flag it. So um, also lost my train of thought with, <laughs> with the customer reviews. You can ask for them. You can't, um, you want to ask in a way that is ethical, like asking for an honest review. You cannot ask for a positive review or like a five-star rating or something like that. Um, 
that person that read your book, they can't, number one, can't be put in that position. And um, it, it's against the ethics and the Amazon guidelines to do that. It has, you have to ask for an honest review. And that goes for all places too. You don't want to ask somebody to give you, you know, a good review anywhere. Right, right. I would a hundred percent agree. Um, why don't we move on to, oh, I did talk about Amazon author central. Um, what about Goodreads customer reviews? Mm. Yes. Goodreads again. And I've said this before, um, Goodreads is a great place for authors because that's where the readers are. And on Goodreads, you know, you, it, there's no verified or unverified purchase. It's, you know, you can leave a book review for a book that you read in second grade, um, you know, and you can do leave a rating, which I think is like a star rating. Um, yeah. And then you can also leave a review. Um, you know, those are two different things on Goodreads. And those are really valuable because readers respect other readers. Um and, and that's really a good place for it. Yeah. And Goodreads, even though Goodreads is owned by Amazon, Goodreads is great because people come to Goodreads because they want to talk about books mm -hmm. and that's it. Um, I do want to point out that the star rating for Goodreads, I think some people, some authors can get disappointed with a three star rating, but in the Goodreads community, three stars means that you liked it. Okay. Yeah. Four stars and is that you really liked it. And five stars is like best book you've read in a long time. Okay. Top, like top favorite. Yeah. And Goodreads is probably a little bit tougher too, because you know, they, they are readers and they're going to be brutally honest. I uh, think I heard, and I mean, I'm saying this on a platform here, but I'm pretty sure that I heard that the average rating on Goodreads is like, it's somewhere between three and a half and maybe four stars. I would believe that. Yeah. And I think they're, because it's a reader platform, they're not as a, intimidated to to leave the honest reviews whereas right. amazon i think i think that's more um for the authors mm -hmm. this is definitely a reader driven platform right but the same ethics apply here um you can't you can't pay somebody to leave a consumer review for you. you there can't be any leverage there now one thing that you can do as an author you can um well, your launch team, you want them to definitely be leaving set up to leave reviews as soon as your book comes out. Um, you're giving them an advanced reader copy, which is totally fine through the Amazon standards. You can give somebody a free book in advance um, for the purpose of reviewing. Um, but again, they have to leave an honest review. So it could be, you know, it could be your neighbor. And if they don't like it, they can say it on Amazon. <laughs> I'm just putting that out there, but um, you can. There can be no leverage. You can't. There can't be the word if. If you read this, then you know. So, um, and then what about BookBub? You can leave reviews on BookBub. That is true, and that's something that I'm really just starting to explore. Um, <clears throat> BookBub, it's another, it's a lot like Goodreads in a way. Now they talk about getting a BookBub deal, which is a, a very big deal. Um, but even having your book on there and people, it's also reader driven, um, leaving reviews for you is, it's another, it's another big deal. And you, and I think there's a little bit more to those reviews. I think you can leave a rating an actual written paragraph review. And then you can also tag what you liked about it, which is a very interesting um, way of doing that. I like it. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's actually really helpful. If you are looking for something to read and you decide to go into BookBub and search by tags, 
mm-hmm. based on what you're looking for. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's a, a good way of doing it. Um, those are the three top review places. Now, you can also, um, you can take those reviews, especially, particularly the editorial ones, and you can use them for your own purposes. You can use them on your website. You can make quote blocks with them. Um, oh, let's Social see. media graphics. Social media graphics. You can use them on your newsletter. Um, and, you know, you can hi- I like this idea. You can highlight um, a review once a month and um, and then incur- have a, a button straight to leave the reviews for the person that's reading your newsletter um, That's and telling them they could have a chance to have their review in, in the next newsletter. So uh, I think that idea is fun. Now, with the consumer reviews, I think you have to have permission from the person that left the review in order to use it in another location. Oh, Um, I did not know that. I did read that somewhere and I can't tell you exactly where I've got it written down somewhere. Okay. Yes. Um, Maybe we could confirm that and come back here because that would be great if we did not have to get that confirmation. Yes. And I'm not quite sure where I read that. Okay. But we'll look, I'm making a note here. We'll look into that. Um, but the editorial reviews you can for sure use. Mm-hmm. Because you're getting those from, from people yourself. Um, now with the editorial reviews, you can also, am I correct in saying that you can also pay sources to review the books? So there's um like, Publishers Weekly and Kirkus Reviews, just off the top of my head. There's other publications where you can submit your book for a fee and ask to have it reviewed on their platform. And Kirkus is one of, Kirkus and Publishers Weekly are two of the most widely known and you've seen them on the backs of books as editorial reviews. I personally don't have a lot of experience with either paying and submitting for that, but I know that that is an option that's out there. Um, Let me see if we get any comments here. Yeah, I don't see any coming in on my end. Um, this is a topic that we people ask us about a lot. So if you guys have any questions. Um, later on this week, or, you know, as you're watching the replay, please uh, jot them down or comment below and we will um, come back around to them. Absolutely. So Lenora, let's talk about the, the link that you share with your launch team or Ooh. other readers, or even say meeting somebody on the street and you tell them that you're an author and they're like, Hey, can I, can you send me the link and you just pull up your Amazon and shoot the page over to them in a text, right? Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> we learn this, this, you want to have a clean link that what you just said has a timestamp on it, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you don't want that because it, it's got a tracking on it um, through Amazon. So you want to clean that link up. Um, and we have a tutorial for it. It's hard for me to explain over video how to do it, but you're basically going to be taking the ending timestamp off of it. Is that correct? Yes. And I, I'm looking at this here. So you have your, first of all, I'm going to say, if anybody wants us to explain this, um, please, and give you an example, um, please post a comment and we'll talk more about that. But I'm going to verbally state this. So, so you have your URL on Amazon. So, and then after the book, uh, you have forward slash DP and then a bunch of numbers and then a forward slash after at that point, you want to take everything out. So it's DP slash, and then the numbers and then the slash take everything else out. And that's your clean link. Yes. And that's going to take them to either the author page or the book page. Um, 
whichever you want them to go to, but it's going to be clean. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, that's a good thing because with that time, time stamp on there, that's how they track. Um, is, is that how they track the bad reviews or? That's how they track um, like, that's how they track where a review is coming from. So yes. they'll be able to tell based on that timestamp, if reviews are coming from one source that's sending it out widely and it could be tracked, say back to you, it could be tracked back to your mom who's sending it out on your behalf. And, um, yeah. and that, and that could be a little bit biased. So that clean link, um, asking for reviews in an ethical way, which we're about to talk about. These are all best practices for keeping your reviews from being removed by Amazon, which those are special reviews about your book. People are talking about your book. Let's keep those on your Amazon page. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and also with Amazon, uh, this just came to mind too, the now somebody could go on there and say, this book was great. And you know, it'd be a five star. Okay. It's a, it's a good review. Um, but it's not very long and, and people are, that's not giving the potential reader a lot of, a lot to work with. Mm -hmm. um, and then you will see, people will say, was this helpful? And they'll click on those. Well, the more you have of those, the higher up, on the um, Amazon page, it's going to go. So right. if, if it's a long winded review, but it's a bad review, um, people are going to see that too, because it's going to be moved up to the front and they will say if that's helpful or not. Um, so as people leave reviews, you, you want to encourage them, um, I, I suppose, to maybe leave a, a couple of sentences if they can. Um, I think, I think that that goes back to like what we learned about maybe persuasive writing in elementary school or writing a paragraph to support your opinion where you're making your statement and then you need to have one or two sentences that explain why you, why you liked the book or why you did not like the book. There you go. <laughs> And yeah, that's the anatomy of a good review, really, really. And those are going to get pushed up um, more so than a good review that just says, oh, yeah, it was good. That's right. you tell me more. <laughs> um, so why don't we talk about how to get customer reviews? Hmm. We've touched on some of it, such as asking your launch team You've given them the advanced reader copy and you're going to be reminding your launch team to please review your book. But what other ways can you get readers to review your book besides just hoping that they will? Oh, that's a big topic. Um, well, what comes to mind immediately is the newsletter. Mm -hmm. Direct and links. Direct links, asking them specifically within your newsletter, if, if there are people on your newsletter list, um, okay, you read the book, would you mind, you know, taking a few minutes and leaving a review? I'll make it super easy for you. All you have to do is click this link. Um, mm -hmm. Because as, I, as we've heard, it's a little hard to find that place to leave the review sometimes. And if it takes people more than a minute or two, they're gonna just, this is not worth it. They're gonna be done with it. People have short right. attention spans and they're doing you a favor. So you wanna make it super, super easy for them. Um, the newsletter is a great place for that on social media. You can put a, a, a link in link in the profile, as they say, taking you directly to um, to Amazon or to Goodreads. Push those Goodread reviews. It's not all about Amazon. It's not all about Amazon. Um, and on Goodreads, there's a link to take you to Amazon to buy the book. So, yeah. um, so don't don't forget about Goodreads. It's it's important. Yeah, if, I was going to say at the end of your social media posts. Yes, that's a good one too. Mm -hmm. Reminder to please leave a review. Right. And spotlighting those reviews um, as you can. 
And do you want to be spotlighted too? Uh, right, right. And you'll be picked next month. <laughs> yeah. And that's another way of just asking for permission. Do you mind if I share your review? Right. Um, one, th one Another idea I was going to bring up was including a QR code. And you yes. can put that on any kind of swag that you're giving away, bookmarks or um, business cards. For This is all right now. In the book right. world. <laughs> yeah. I think it's fabulous. It takes you right to it. And um, yeah, particularly, particularly if somebody's bought a book from you um, in person and you give them a bookmark and that QR code is on there and they finish the book with the bookmark and they can just go right to it while it's fresh in their mind and, um, and, and leave you a review. So that's right. a great uh, I would, uh, another idea is, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I'm just looking. <laughs> another idea would be asking people to leave a review after you, at the end of any videos, workshops, or podcasts, mm -hmm. particularly podcasts that you're a guest on, because there is going to be a wrap up where the host or even you say, you can find me here on social media. Uh, here's my website. My book is at such and such on Amazon, I would love for you to leave a review would be another way you can just sneak it in there. Right. And letting people know that you, you know, that it's a favor that they're doing for you. Um, but letting them know how important it is and the role that it plays on, you know, you getting your book out there even more. Those reviews are um, super beneficial for doing that, for spreading the message. So if you can play on people's heartstrings a little bit, um, that will help you get reviews too. Absolutely. And people love to help. And which goes to show, we were just talking about this, just asking for it mm -hmm. and saying, hey, it would help me out a lot if you would please leave a review on my book. Just ask. Yep. yep. And you can also remind people because mm -hmm. it's not on the top of their to-do list. Um, but, you, you know, subtly reminding them when you see them or in your newsletter or, or wherever. Now, your launch team, they don't get any passes. They're on your launch team for a reason. If they've not left a review, there's there's got to be a pretty darn good reason for it. Right. In my opinion, because that's why they join the launch team. Uh, that's one of the main reasons. So launch team, you want them leaving a review within that first week. And, right. um, you know, track them down. Track yeah. them down. <laughs> I think that we have about covered it. Have we left anything out as far as the reviews go? Um. Well, it's, it's a rabbit hole too. Um, but if we, if we have specific questions, we can get more specific on it um, down in the comments later this week or whenever, but definitely ask for the reviews and, um, and, and don't be afraid to do it, but make sure you're doing it ethically. That's, that's my big thing. You got to be right. honest with it. So. Yeah. And get creative with it. Get, get creative with how you ask. Um, think outside the box. Yep. Sounds good. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Lenora, for joining us today. This was fun to dive into the world of reviews. Mm -hmm. And read the guidelines. Definitely. <laughs> All right, Claire. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Good talking to you. Bye, everybody. Your comments. Bye. <laughs>